I'm going to be talking uh, about teachers. Uh, the minister referred to education as the engine of social mobility. It's probably a truism to think about teachers as the heart of any effective education system. We know that being taught by an effective teacher or the most effective teacher can give you up to 18 months more learning than being taught by the least effective teacher. More importantly, perhaps for today, we also know that um, students from disadvantaged backgrounds are likely to benefit from an effective teacher to a greater extent. So I'm going to very briefly talk about uh, what we know from the evidence on the characteristics of effective teachers and how those teachers are distributed across the education system. Um, in fact, as many of you will know, it's quite hard to pin down exactly what makes for an effective teacher. Uh, we know one when we see one, but actually identifying the characteristics that we could use to screen people uh, before they enter the teaching profession is actually quite tricky and even harder to identify them uh, once they're in the system or just on the basis of their characteristics. But nonetheless, we have uh, some interesting things we think to say about the Towers data. I think the other thing to point out here is that um, we're moving into a, a somewhat different era. Over the last 20 years, there has definitely been massive systematic change to the education system in the attempt to improve schools and more crucially to bring about more effective teaching within schools. Um, and now we're entering a period of time where the labour market is tightening, as the Minister said, um, and we have an issue with respect to teacher recruitment. And I'm going to make the case today that actually focusing too much on re teacher recruitment is probably not the right way of thinking about this issue. It's also thinking about the importance of teacher retention. And today the TALIS data, whilst they may not reveal huge amounts in terms of uh, you know, where particularly effective teachers are located in the system. I think they do reveal some interesting features of the data uh, which imply that um, teachers are not evenly distributed across the system and that access to uh, good teachers may not be very even. So what do we know about um, effective teachers? Um, we know for sure that teachers take a while to get going, understandably it takes a while to learn the, the, the trade, and so teachers in the first few years are less effective. That's not new. And I think that does raise an important question about where those teachers are located in the system. There's much weaker evidence, and indeed uh, a number of really good studies have not found that teacher qualifications make a difference, uh, but there's a, some, some indicative evidence that perhaps having relevant postgraduate qualifications might uh, improve teacher effectiveness. But I think it's an important thing to look at for another reason, which is it does give you some indication of the types of jobs within teaching that might be appealing to our best qualified individuals. Um, and that might give us some insight into which uh, bits of the, of the system teachers find uh, to be very attractive. And we do know, and I'm sure Rob is going to talk about this later, that teachers who spend more time on task, have organized, uh, managed classrooms, etc., are more effective. Some of that's quite difficult to actually measure in TALIS. But again, what I'm going to do today is focus rather on the teachers themselves and the kinds of jobs that they're doing. So very briefly, our sample is around 1,200 students in maintained schools, 1,100 in academies, and rather fewer in independent schools, only 10 independent schools represented in the data, which means that I'm going to say not that very much about the comparison with independent, but it's in there because uh, I know it's a, a focus of interest to this group. How are we going to look at it? We look at it by focusing on um, how to, teachers are distributed across different types of schools. Uh, more or less deprived schools, as we measure by the FSM rate, higher and lower attaining schools, as measured by GCSE schools, and also, with the caveat I've just given on sample size, across school type. So what I'm hoping to show you is, is how these teachers are distributed across the system. And the first um, sort of significant finding is that we do note that uh, the most advantaged and the highest attaining schools have more experienced teachers. There are some some differences across school type as well. Um, and you can see that here, that those schools that are located, are located in the top quintile, so these are the highest fifth attaining schools with good GCSE schools, uh, they have teachers that are, are, are more experienced than those uh, further down the distribution. I think the really important point, though, is in the, in the bubble over there. If we have 40% of our teachers with fewer than 
four years' experience, that's probably something we need to be thinking quite long and hard about it, particularly with the relatively high mean years of experience. So we've got a system where we have a large number of, of teachers coming into the system and immediately dropping out again. And it should be of concern to us where those teachers are located in the system, not just because we know that the most inexperienced teachers are, are going to be less effective, so where we train our teachers really matters, uh, and that raises some questions about the reforms perhaps to the teacher training system where we're going to have larger numbers of inexperienced um, teachers in, in, in a few schools. Um, but it's also more generally about what is it about teaching that makes it less effective or, or less attractive, I should say, as a job. And so as we go through the slides, that's a theme that will emerge. The other bit of evidence that we know is that... Um, the debate about subject knowledge is highly contentious and whether or not subject knowledge makes a great deal of difference to teacher effectiveness. But again, if you think about this as an indicator of what types of teacher go where, I think that one of the interesting things that we've uh, uncovered in the data is the bottom two bullet points. So um, in the most deprived and lower attaining schools, a quarter of teachers are teaching three or more subjects and that proportion <laughs> while still relatively high at 13%, is much lower in more uh, affluent schools and higher attaining schools. So what does that mean? Even if you think that teachers can be effective in three or more subjects, um, that might raise the issue about whether or not the workload uh, and the desirability of a role that takes you know, such breadth uh, might be uh, an issue. And I think nobody can deny that the workload associated with teaching three or more is likely to be far higher. And this is sort of borne out to some degree as one of the facets that um, the minister was referring to about teacher workload. Um, he already discussed the high mean hours of work in England. Um, and, you know, Talis has suggested to us that around about half of teachers think the workload is unmanageable. But I think even all that hides something that's uh, a little bit more worrying um, around about a quarter of teachers are, are working more than uh, 55 hours a week and, and over 10% of teachers working in excess of 60 hours a week. So even uh, if you uh, are trying to reduce the mean, you also should be worried about the variation. So the workload varies hugely across teachers. Um, some of that is driven by subject. When we look at this in a regression context, um, those teaching the core subjects have higher workloads. Uh, again, something to consider. The minister referred to uh, a failing local authority or potentially failing local authority and, and suggested there might be some sort of trade-off between uh, taking care of the adults, well, which I presume you meant the teachers, um, and taking care of the children. Well, I think one of the interesting questions, particularly as we move into a more difficult labour market where recruiting teachers is harder, is whether or not we should see it as quite that simple a trade-off. How effective will teachers be, especially the 10% working more than 60 hours a week? Um, and what is it that we can do to reduce the workload? And it was fantastic to hear about you know, the, the press on trying to reduce teacher workload to make it a more attractive profession. And one aspect of that is that teachers across the system are not using their time in the same way um, in different types of schools. And what we found is that in the most high attaining and, and less deprived schools, teachers are spending more time teaching and less time on administration. And you can see that um, here. So um, on the left-hand side, you have the, the most affluent schools with the, the lowest rates of free school meal el eligibility and up to 85% of their time spent teaching. As you move to the far right, you're looking at higher levels of deprivation, uh, less, more deprived schools, and you're getting a, a lower proportion of their time spent on teaching. Having said that, that's not all entirely bad news because uh, the proportion of time these teachers are spending on teaching is, is roughly similar to the, the OEC, well, the TALIS average. Um, but of course, remember, they're also working longer hours than the TALIS average. So kids in our schools are getting more time from teachers, but with unequal distribution across different types of schools. And what we need to think about when we're considering teaching as a profession is how do we square all these circles? How can we get workload manageable, maintain enough time on task and enough time teaching, and most importantly of all, ensure that children from all types of schools uh, do access um, 
the, the best teachers that we have and that we're not finding that teachers are kind of congregating or the best teachers are congregating in different parts of the system. So the other issue is what teachers do when they get there. Uh, teachers in less deprived schools and with uh, very high GCSE results, perhaps unsurprisingly, suggest that uh, their students are better behaved and, and there are better relationships between um, students and parents. And you can see that with this graph here. Again, the, the most uh, affluent schools on the left and, and the most deprived on the right. And uh, particularly if we focus on the blue bars, for example, is the proportion of teachers saying that their students are well behaved. And again, we should be really perhaps quite pleased that 80% of teachers, even in the most deprived schools, say that their students are well behaved. Um, so I certainly don't want to imply that this is you know, a disaster. Um, but I think, again, we can see this slight social gradient. And when you combine that with issues around workload uh, and the desirability of different jobs in teaching, uh, we might be somewhat concerned about where teachers are located. So this was the one uh, uh, that gave me cause for thought when it came out uh, a few months ago, and we've looked further into it, is this idea of teacher satisfaction, and does it matter that um, the proportion of teachers that are satisfied that with their job is, is uh, significantly lower in England as opposed to other TALIS countries? Uh, well, first of all, again, glass half full, 80% or more of teachers are satisfied with their jobs, very satisfied or strongly satisfied. Um, and so we could say that, you know, for the majority of the profession, this is still a good job, and I think that we shouldn't forget that. But undeniably, England seems to be a bit of an outlier in terms of uh, having a relatively low level of satisfaction. And this is not what we want as we enter an era of uh, recruitment difficulties, and I think that's something for us to think about. So if we had to sum up what it might say in the implications for policies, there are not massive differences in the characteristics of teachers across different types of schools. You know, uh, the age of teachers doesn't vary hugely from one school type to another. Um, but what we do see are differences uh, in uh, experience, uh, particularly at the top end of the system, with that 20% of schools in the state system at the very top end having uh, more experienced teachers. And that might be indicative of, of the desirability of working at that end of the sector. We might be concerned about, or well, we are concerned about, the long hours and, and the low levels of satisfaction. And we've heard today about policies that are in train to try and address that. Um, but I think one danger that we have in the system at the moment is when we focus on averages, we miss the story behind that average. And I'm very struck that, particularly on the sort of the